Hi everybody, DJ Yokely with you for another very special player profile, JFK style. It's Blue Pride time here on the network. I am joined by the Iceman, Michael Morrow. Mike, it's been a long time since our last conversation. Feels like forever, only football season, but in JFK land, that is like three seasons, multiple seasons uh, away. And, and let me tell you something, brother, you being a, another multi-sport athlete, it has been a ride for you this year. Let's talk first about uh, about baseball naturally and uh you guys had quite the ride uh, a little bit of uh hardware at the end of the season from start to finish did you feel like this was the year and, and don't lie i'll know if you're lying yeah i mean even from the start um coming in january at our indoor facility i take the field um we had a lot of freshmen so i knew we were gonna be young but uh, a lot of the kids played like travel ball and summer league and stuff like that so it's not like we're going in here blind. We all had experience. And then, obviously, uh, me, Alex, Gavin, as the juniors, we had that leadership to build upon. And then Cam, obviously, he's a good athlete, so he helped us out a lot uh, being a pitcher. So I felt like we could definitely be able to do something special. So when you look at it, I mean, you, you talked about January. When, when you're looking at yourself and 10 other guys and a first-year head coach and Coach Chimbati – do you sit there and go, okay, we can we can do something special here? Did you ever in the back of your mind think that you'd be raising the trophy as as the state champion in D4? I mean, that's obviously always the goal. Uh, never been done before. So it was always that question mark of if this team could do it, if they could do it how. Especially with the first-year coaches. Um, like, a little experience on that stage. But uh, he, I think he did a pretty good job with uh, – Coach Carmen and Coach Pat along the way. Uh, we had that just great establishment of pitching throughout our entire year. And then the bats just came along and we all put it together. So talk to me about, I mean, there, there's got to be something that the 11 of you, almost all of you play another sport you know, at JFK. You almost have to with, with having, uh, you know, being one of the smaller schools in the entire state. When you look at this, did did the run to state in football and then the run in basketball help you guys focus in on, listen, it's been one heck of a year. We've been in school since the jump. Let's do something special here. And, and did those did those seasons, those postseasons and the seasons that you had, help you during baseball season to, to kind of focus in on championship when playoff time, t playoff time came around? Oh, 100%. I mean, I know from personal experience that I could attest to some football players. Once we uh, obviously lost in that state championship, it left that like that bad taste in your mouth. So once we started nearing playoff season and baseball and getting there and getting there, we just didn't accept losing. So we just kept pushing and pushing, and we knew once we held that trophy up above our heads, it was going to be a good day. So talk to me about. I mean, was there a, a did somebody say something to fire you guys up in that state championship game? Was was there anybody that said anything, or was there just a genuine like? Let's go out and play Eagle baseball and let the chips fall where they might. I mean, it was pretty good. We There's a little bit of a pep talk. Uh, I know I talked to Gavin a little bit before the game. Just kind of. Can you share some, what you said? Some of it. <laughs> All right, uh, what did you say? I just told him to loosen up a little bit, you know, um, kind of try to lighten the mood. I was like, we lost 31 nothing in football, so how – back of this get but uh because he was starting out of the bump so i just want to try to calm the nerves down a little bit uh i think it worked pretty well but you we, we have to talk to him about my effects and the speech i gave him but yeah don't worry just, i will <laughs> just go out there and play your game um we know what we could do we know what we bring to the table and just at the end of the day we got to get the job done all right so in baseball one run can mean so much you guys are up three nothing Feeling pretty good, but in a state championship game, you know three runs can go away like that at a three-run lead. You get that fourth run, and you I think you scored the first run of the game, if I'm not mistaken. How good did it feel to get that fourth run? Did you feel comfortable, and, and did it feel like an eternity to get those final outs to, to finally raise that trophy? Oh, I started counting at the end. I told Alex, I'm like, nine more outs, still champs, and... We just kind of continued from there. But, yeah, once I hit in that uh, fourth RBI, I'm like, all right, that's the nail in the coffin. They're not coming back from this. And then eventually I never did. I knew Gavin was going to hold up on the mound. And we weren't full. We weren't going to lose. 
So you got 11 guys, and I've heard it from everybody that said anything about your championship here, Mike. It's 11 guys. You did it with 11 guys, and 11 guys is all you needed. How special is that in the back of your mind to know that you had you and 10 brothers and, of course, the coaching staff, that's all you needed. You, you just needed two guys on the bench to help you out and maybe in the bullpen if, if necessary, um, you know, to chart pitches or whatever. This team is close-knit from top to bottom. This is a close-knit school at Warren JFK. Do you feel fortunate that you only needed 11 guys to win a state championship? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, I don't know how many. They had like 40 kids or whatever. Um, they had more on their bench than we had on our entire team. So to come out on top, uh, a little quality over quantity, it just really shows what brothers can do together and how we can pull through even when times are tough. Dude, tell me when you realized this team had something special going. What part of the season was it when you finally said, hey, I think we got something here. Um, I think when we, that game, that, it really was that game when Fort Laramie, when we beat Fort Laramie in the semifinals. Because I think they're they're a pretty ball, good ball club. I mean, we play Canfield. So we didn't beat them, obviously. But we saw, like, the competition we were going up against. And... When that Fort Laramie came team in, um, they did a pretty good job. But once we beat them, because they started piling on down at the end there, and we just held our own, stayed strong, and we got the W. So I think that was really it when it sunk in. Like, all right, we have a serious chance of doing this thing. Okay, so you finally got to raise the trophy, right? And now you, you – tomorrow, I think, you turn your focus to, uh, to football. You guys were this close last year, right? State runners <laughs> up. How – how much does this help you realize how difficult it is to win a state championship? Everybody talks about it, you know, this time of year going into football from your standpoint, after less than a week away, you know, departed from raising that championship trophy. Does it help you understand and, and, and your teammates understand how difficult it is to really win that game? Without a doubt. I mean, so much grit and effort was put into that. It just felt like days were never ending on, end on end on end so just to actually like work it out and put on all the hard work that delayed gratification it just really helped so now for this football season it's going to be eight times harder harder to do it twice than once how do you flip that switch so quickly from from one sport to another you guys have to do it all the time how, how do you do it personally i mean i'm always practicing um i want to be the best there is i gotta be the hardest worker no matter what so it's just the mentality for me. Um, I will let no one beat me no matter what. So, This is one of the years you guys have been waiting for, right? This year, this this past year, and, and Cam's senior season and going into your senior season, when you look at this, you know, are you going to, like, what do you what do you look at for an accomplishment? Is it a failure if you guys don't win a state championship in football, or is it something where you're looking to do specific things as a team and as an individual? You know, obviously you got to set goals, but – Number one is always win it all. Um, you can't get better than that. So in my eyes, I will settle for nothing less. Uh, as individuals, I think we all should set personal goals, not so much as a team, like yep. team goal as individuals. But I think it's always that important to try to compete with each other. So like the all-county, all-state stuff, try to compete and be the best. In your mind, is there anything better than winning that state championship so far in your, your athletic career? No. No way. That's just so, so, and not to bring up bad stuff, and naturally you guys had a great football year, but you said it, you, you, you finished just a little bit short. The bitter taste in your mouth, was it just as sweet to be on the other side as the bitterness that it was to be on the, on the side that, that came up a little bit short? Uh. Maybe a little worse. Uh, I hate losing, but at the same time, I love me some winning. <laughs> Be the best and no, like I, we did it. We beat all of you. It's just great. So now, it's just I don't want to be content. I'm not satisfied yet. Yeah. Um. So I gotta go get one in football now. That a boy. All right, brother. The Ice Man. A uh, little quick, quick. Uh, Let's do a little uh, question and answer here, a little little quick trigger, if you will. One thing that you would give up your state title for in baseball? 
Uh, uh, quick trigger, huh? Uh, Indians tickets? No, no. I'm a Yankees fan. Yankee tickets? Uh, no. Multi billion dollars, maybe. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Uh, your favorite offensive memory of this season, personally. Okay. Yep. Uh, it got to be that first RBI I had in the state game. Okay. So then let's go your favorite defensive uh, memory of 2021. <clears throat> I think uh, that last hit uh, to Alex Starfield the state game. Just seal the deal. I love it. Not even you. No. Not even you. I love it. All right. Let's talk about uh, which one of your coaches could win in a foot race to first base. That's a good one. Uh, I think it's Coach Carmen. Okay. Very, very fair. Uh, strongest arm on the team? Uh, I think Cam's probably. Okay. Perfect. Biggest joker on the team. Oh, uh, that's a good one there. Go with Nico. All right. The guy that, that would be willing to break up a double play by cleating somebody. <laughs> Me. Man, I knew it. I knew when I thought of that one it was going to be you. Yeah. Not dirty. It's a baseball play. That's how it is. Um, first guy out of the dugout if there was trouble. Me or Alex. Okay, fair enough. Last guy out of the dugout if there was trouble. Jim. Mm. Okay. First person to cry after getting a beanball between the numbers. Condo. <laughs> First person to stare down the pitcher after getting one between the numbers. I did that, yeah, that was me. I knew it. I knew it again. I'm two for two, right between the one and the six, and you store, you stared him down. I did that at Beachwood, yeah. <laughs> um, your your role models, we've talked about it before. Enlighten me again, enlighten everybody else. That's the first time meeting you. Your role model on the field for baseball would be who? Uh, I watched a bunch of different players get in the move. Uh, like I watched like Mike Trout, Bryce Harper, and uh, Kyle Ripken Jr. highlights for the pitching. Uh, Kyle Ripken Jr.? Yeah. Old school. I like it. A little stance after him a little bit. So I just uh, – I'm a big fan of them old games. All right. Role models off the field. I think I know where you're going with this. Uh – Off the field, I mean, obviously religion. So just try to do everything Christian way. Um, uh, a lot of family help. So mm -hmm. everyone in my family's good to me and helps me a lot. So I'd say some of them too. All right, you ready for the final question? I know you're a car guy, and I know what. What do you call your car? What's uh, Caroline? Caroline. All right. So would you give up? Your state championship or Caroline, you had to have, you had to keep one and get one up. Little sore spot there. She's not exactly starting right now. So. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I can't have a problem, so I'm giving up the car. You're giving up the car and keeping the state yeah. title. That he, there he is, the Iceman himself, Michael Morrow, one of the my favorites uh, to interview. A, a strong supporter of the network. Your family loves YSN. I can't thank him enough for that, my brother. Congratulations, 100 times over. I'm super proud of you. We're all proud of you here. Congratulations to you and your teammates on a state championship, and go take one in football too. Absolutely. Thank you.